Hi, my name is Tyler Puckett. I'm a student in the Baton Rouge Magnet High School AP Art History class. A few weeks ago, our class visited the New Orleans Museum of Art, and we were allowed to view lots of different art pieces from many different time periods, uh, different cultures, different places. You know, um, today I'm going to be going over two of the artworks that I can relate to from learning about in class. Uh, the first one is the Mounted Warrior Veranda Post, which they actually had at Noma, and the second one will be the palace doors to the Agoga Palace. These were both made by the same artist, and that's why I'm going to be comparing them. Well, first let's start off with the Mounted Warrior Veranda Post. Um, this was a veranda post in the Palace of Agoga, just like the door. Um, he was commissioned, the artist, Alawe Abise, was commissioned to make this art for the palace uh, by some you know, higher up royals who were at the palace. Um, the uh, artwork shows a warrior on a donkey, and I actually have something I read on Africa.edu to back this up. Uh, Africa.edu said, in Yoruba art, figures on horseback usually represent kings, warriors, or hunters, and you know this will be one of the three. This is the warrior. The piece was made between uh, the years of 1910 and 1940. 14, sorry. Um, one thing I noticed. The first thing that came to my head whenever I saw this art piece was he has a spear in one hand and a machete in the other. Um, right here is the spear and then there's the machete. Uh, the way I thought of it was the machete represented protection for his community, protection for the Yoruba, um, and then the spear would represent more of a hunting and scavenging for food and supplies, you know, more uh, two different kinds of survival, you know, survival against other beings and then survival against nature. It would make sense for a warrior to do this sort of work as, you know, they're there to protect their community, they're do, there to do the harder work, you know. Uh, as you can tell, uh, if you, well, if you can see it with my camera, the warrior has a cubic sort of figure on top of his head, which most likely is a headdress, you know. It's, um, headdresses represent, throughout all of history, headdresses have always represented uh, higher power, higher intellect, all of that. It's a little bit hard to see here, but there is a small woman-like figure on the side of him with some sort of a wind instrument, and she's blowing on it. And, um... It was believed to be his first wife, and if not his first wife, one of his wives. Uh, just because of the womanly figure, you can only assume that it's a wife. Um, she's most likely there to um, support him morally, to you know, keep him going, to inspire him. Women didn't have too many rights back then, so mostly what they would do is uh, you know, work for their family, work for their husbands, do everything to support them. Another thing that you can't see from this picture is on his other side he has a uh, what you could assume is a hunting bag. Uh, it has a sort of face on it with a open mouth, kind of a curled open mouth and eyes. It almost looks a little menacing to me. I'm not sure if everyone would assume that, but to me it looked a little menacing. And you know, if it's if it's on his bag, if it's important enough to be on a common uh, you know, a t something he wears on a daily basis. It, mu it must be something important like a deity, a god, something of the like. Um, well, the bag fits normally on the man, as do his clothes, his headdress, and everything he's holding. But you can also notice that he's disproportionate to the wife, even though women are generally smaller. He's very disproportionate, extremely disproportionate to the wife and to the donkey he's sitting on. And this is a symbol of hierarchy of scale. Um, this veranda post was one of a few veranda posts put inside the Agoga Palace. Uh, all of them, though, depicted some sort of power. You know, if you're, if you're going to a palace where all the royals are, if commoners are visiting the palace, they'll probably look up to these these beings, or, well, uh, I shouldn't say beings because they're actual humans, but some of them were gods that they depicted on there, and um, they mostly, like, they most likely put these out there for viewing so people could see who's above them. 
uh, people could you know it's 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 like it's it's a common thing to show higher beings as artworks just so people could admire them and view them as that about like uh, five to ten years before Alloway made the veranda posts for the palace he also made these palace doors uh, for the same palace you know uh, this pair of doors still kind of has authoritative figures in it such as the veranda post does it's a little hard to see but if you look right here you can see a man in a sling with two men holding him up uh, which is obviously some sort of some sort of important figure some sort of ruler and in all the other places you can see in all the other places on the uh, door you can see workers there's also someone in the throne right here with a woman behind him which is most likely the mother or the wife and but uh, you can see so many people down here just doing work lots of work that's probably benefiting these rulers you know helping them they're basically they're just serving their leaders right there this kind of shows how Alloway as an artist um, I, I would like to think that it means fame got to him in a way because in these areas he was depicting all the work that commoners did for the leaders all the things they did to help people out you know all, all the things they would do for people that are above them and then you know ten years about ten years later now he's just showing authoritative figures only authoritative figures no commoners really only just higher-ups and uh, I feel like maybe he just kind of uh, you know just let the fame get to him a little bit because he's not even recognizing the you know the smaller people in the community like he was but instead of just a, uh, a mental fashion to these artworks physically the art changed in the way that this was just a high relief sort of uh, sculpture high relief flat back sculpture and then the brand posts were completely in the round um, what, what stayed the same between his artworks though is he kept the same style of uh, depicting humans his uh, the people in the uh, palace door look they like they look like the same sort of person that the warrior is they're in the same exact style they're stylized the same same exact way and looking at lots of his other artworks online I've noticed he's always done this style of human uh, the biggest thing I can conclude from his change over uh, a tradition over time is that he just kind of lost touch with who he used to be which was a common man you know no one no one uh, powerful in the community no one above others but then his artwork was more recognized by royal royalty and um, he was commissioned to do artworks like this palace door and this veranda post among others and it just I think it I feel like it just kind of got to him because he stopped depicting uh, commoners or you know villagers just smaller people like he used to be in his art um, well this has been my presentation I my main sources my two main sources were metmuseum.org and africa.edu thank you for listening